Hi chums, well big day yesterday, Michael came down and we got the dust extractor built so I'm going to do a bit of wiggling about here with the tripod, so that's the extractor there obviously it's a Fox 2 horsepower extractor um, run on 240 volts which is standard here so it makes everything wiring up purposes, it makes it very simple and then on the left of it we have the drop box here, the blue box with the, the cyclone on top of it there and then over here we have the floor sweep and a pipe on it, just a matter of connecting a pipe into the top of it and it works the very best. So Michael and myself built this up yesterday and we did a test on it and I'll explain why, what we did and how we did it in a moment but um, I'll just first explain the, the, the setup here okay so I'm just going to set this up a wee bit like that I think would do okay and then turn the screen so that I can see it from over there. Right. <clears throat> okay, so the floor sweep, we've got it. It works so we can get rid of it. Right, the vortex, the, the, the drop box. I'm just going to change this angle a little bit because I just can't see the screen from where I am over there. Right, the, the vortex, or the, the cyclone. Basically, what happens is the dirt goes in this pipe here. The dirt spirals down the cyclone and it's the air that went in here gets sucked out again from here up through here into this pipe and up into the extractor now what we did yesterday was I can't do this on my own today because the top's not glued in and stuff but how we set the depth for this pipe here was I got a big load of shavings and stuff and put it in the floor and then while I hoovered the shavings up Michael moved this up and down okay so he, he, he moved he moved his top pipe up and down until we couldn't hear any shavings hitting against the metal rim here on the extractor. So once it went silent and we, we put the shavings in a few times, a, couple, a good load of shavings, and there was no noise over there, we knew we'd hit the spot where it was most efficient that the, the shavings were going into the drum. And when we checked the bag, there's virtually nothing in the bag and the drums, the drums, well, all the stuff's in the drum now. So, where are we at? I'm going to dismantle this a bit to show you what we did. So, I'll just do that now. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not. Before I take it apart, I'll let you hear it going because that's about the, Europe. you will be about the distance I will be from the extractor when it's going. So, I'll just let you hear how, how loud it is. Okay, what I was tapping there was here, you notice in here and down below there was no suction. So there was somebody, I can't remember your name, but thanks for giving me the information. Um, it's a high volume, low pressure system. Your shop vac is low volume, high pressure, and it will suck things in. But this is low pressure, so it's, these are, there's, no, there's no sort of... Um, reinforcement needed for the cone of the barrel. This barrel's really thick anyway. It's a, there was nitric acid in it, so it has to be thick, I suppose. So, I say, that's, that's it working, and I'm quite pleased. I thought it'd be an awful lot more noisy. I've heard CAMVAC going, and I've heard record power going. Um, the two, the, the cylinder type, the drum, and they're really noisy. But I thought that was quite okay, you know? So, what I'll do is here, I'll take this thing apart, and I'll show you where we determined the best part for the the, the, the pipe down is because anybody want to f continue with this and do one of their own it's, it's worth knowing okay so take this pipe here out uh. oh, here we are okay so as I said Michael Michael did, did this sort of business here while the machine was running. He this is a quite a snug fit. He moved the pipe up and down 
and that's the spot where it's most efficient. Now that's 10 inches from here to here. And that 10 inches just happens to be three inches below the bottom of this pipe. So it seems as if that's the optimum height. Well, that's what we find was the optimum height for this cone of this diameter and size. And when we looked at it, that means that the stuff's coming in here. So we can't have the, I'll take the pipe out and show you from the outside. So we don't want the pipe sitting there because that's going to suck the dirt straight up as it comes in. We don't want it sitting there because it's still got a chance of sucking some of the dirt in. But if we have it here, it seems as if the dirt is getting flung against the side of the cone, so the centrifugal force is keeping it against the cone, but the force of the vacuum is not enough to overcome the centrifugal force that's been imparted to the dirt. So by putting it here, it means the stuff's getting flung past and it, the, the centrifugal force keeps going down the cone, and then we're sucking clean air out from here. So anybody doing this, we have found with four inch pipe, three inches below the intake is the optimum position. So I think that's useful to you. There's another couple of wee things I want to show you here. These things here, um, I'll maybe just do a close up on this if, it, if, it, if you don't mind. Um, it's on the catches, I'll just move this over here. Turn it down to the barrel and then, where do you do a close up? Yeah, yeah, that those little catches. Where was the last time you saw those? The last time you saw those was on a rally car and they've used those, those are, those are bonnet anchors or hood anchors and they're for quick release bonnets and so they can get the, they can open the bonnet up quickly and there's a rubber anchor on a bracket and they open and close dead easy. So those do a great job, they, they work really really well and um, I was happy with that. I made one mistake when I was cutting the cone when I was cutting the bottom, when I cut the hole for the cone, I wanted to bevel the coat, bevel it so it matched the side of the cone, and I did. But I forgot that when I was doing it, when I was doing it, if you can see what I'm seeing here. Oh no, I better, I'm going to have to turn this up again. Right, let's see, sorry about that folks. Right, I'll come back out a bit too, because it'll be easier to see. Right, what I said was, when I was doing the top of this here, I wanted to bevel, bevel this hole so that it matched the inside of the cone, or the outside of the cone, I should say. And what did they do? This was on the lathe, in that position there. So I cut the bevel to suit the cone as if it was going in this way. But <laughs> it's going that way. So the bevel runs the wrong way. So I don't have the support inside here that I wanted. But saying that, nothing has been glued. And while we, were, while we were doing the test yesterday, nothing came apart. So it, it's, it's, it's strong enough as it is. So I just put a glue, run some glue around the top and, up, and the inside as well. And that'll do the job all right. Um, the extractor, just move the camera this way. And I'll show you the one mistake we made. Well, the first problem was that we didn't have any instructions. The instructions, well, we did have instructions, but here's the problem. Um, to my disgrace, the instructions are in French, and my French is pretty poor. So what we did was, we set out all the nuts and bolts, and we counted all the holes, and we counted the nuts and bolts, and we matched them all up, and we got it done that way. And, just, and that, on common sense, you know, we got it done. The only mistake we made was that there are six brackets underneath the, the motor here. And that there are six, there are six bolts, sorry, and there are six bolts going around the side of the collar. Those bolts there on the collar are longer than the ones here. But when we saw the six threaded holes, we put we put these bolts in first, and then we realised our mistake. So it's just a matter of swapping them over. So in the whole build, that was the only problem we had. There's some other nice touches in this thing too. Um, if you look at this here, people complain about. The fact that they have trouble putting the brackets, putting the the bags onto the top of it. But if you look at the bag and look at here, the st the straps here, um, they go through the bag. So you, there's actually like a hem. I don't know what you call it. Uh, ladies, you can t put substitute the right word here somehow or other. Whatever that thing is, where that goes in, um, it's a hole right around, 
and you thread the strap through the hole and then putting it onto the, the thing is just child's play. So um, that's where we are, so that's, that's it built. Now, I'm not going to do a demonstration because I can't do it on my own. Um, Michael had to hold that in position yesterday because it's a bit sort of f flexible at the top of the cone and um, I have to also do a job here. I'll just turn around this direction now and I'll, I'll hold the camera up to let you see what I'm going to do. Whoa, wrong way. All this stuff here, my lathe and everything else has to move. So what I'll do is I'm going to move all this stuff here back and leave that area empty. <coughs> Excuse me. And then as I put the stuff back, I'll decide where things go. I was trying to do everything and shuffle it all about and have it done at one go, but I can't do it. So Michael quite intelligently said to me yesterday, clear the place out and then put back the stuff you want in priority and then the rest of the stuff afterwards. He also gave me another good idea to put the bandsaw and the miter saw on wheels. So I've ordered four sets of, of braked casters and I got four inch casters for it because three inch don't, well three inch okay but two inches too small for this floor because it's very uneven in places. So that's where we are. So when I get this cleared out, I'm going to put the extractor over here and the lathe will be over here but turned out 90 degrees and that'll give me more access to the end of it and stuff and make it easier making bowls as well. So that's where we are folks and um, thanks for following along with this this build but um, I can assure you that whenever I get this place sorted out and I get the thing in position I'll show you exactly how it works. This thing here, the floor sweep, brilliant idea but I'm also going to do something else. That pipe comes off very easily so I'm going to put a handle on the pipe and use that as a like a broom you know like sort of for sweeping the floor <coughs> excuse me i've got some sort of dust in the throat there so uh there we are so as i say thanks for watching folks it was well i thought it was good fun for me i learned an awful lot doing it one of the things i did learn here i'll have to show you this now because michael michael what did, has got whoops michael has sheet metal work in his background and he said to me i didn't need oh i'm very close sir I, I might, right, that's okay. He said, you didn't need to cut that shape of a hole. He said, all you need to do is cut a hole, a round hole, a four inch hole, and then just widen it to where you needed it widened. Because all you're looking is to go into the tangent. And then once you get a round hole, you can just stretch it basically. And if you see here, that's full of putty or full of, full of glue right up to here. So there's about a two inch or five centimeter area I didn't need to cut out. But these, these are the things you learn as you go along, you know. And uh, I've I've never worked with sheet metal in my life, so I didn't know that. But uh, for any of you, any of you, anybody else doing it, um, you don't need to be as fussy as I was. All right, so that's it, folks. Um, all the best now, and I'll keep you up to date with what I'm doing next. But the next thing is going to be, well, part of it's going to be have to be a deep clean of this whole place because it's filthy with all the dust for five years of turning, and uh, everything's covered in dust. That I don't that anything that doesn't get used is covered in dust. So that's where we are. So uh, I'm delighted with it. Uh, Michael said he was impressed with it, which, impre which, which pleased me because um, he's got experience with other extractors. So I, I, have, I have none. So I was happy with that. And uh, I want to get this thing all glued up and this set up properly. I know what I'll do. I'll get this glued up in the next day or so and I'll do a wee demo for you before I put it all in position. All right. So that's it folks, uh, all the best now and thanks very much for watching, you've been very patient people. All the best now, bye bye.